head of the house is over here already. What's going on? Yeah, you just got took a little while to get beautified. Yeah, we just don't do ugly in this church, do we? Good morning, good morning, good, good morning. morning. Welcome. Amen. This is I'm Pastor Chris. This is Pastor Jojo. We want to welcome you to Faith Life Fellowship, the revival capital of the Rocky Mountains. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jojo, how are you doing? I, I'm doing awesome. Hallelujah. We're so excited to be it's here with you. It's been a great week. You. It is in spite of uh, you know, all the things that are going on in the country, the, the word of God is still going forth. Amen. Mm -hmm. So uh, kind of worked in our favor, actually, because we've been wanting to, to get ourselves into position where we can uh, uh, live stream our services. And yeah. uh, we've been putting it off and putting it off, but we were kind of forced into it. So praise the <laughs> Lord. So it worked in our favor. Amen. But Amen. we just want to welcome you uh, to Faith Life Fellowship. We got maybe a dozen and a half people in the congregation here, the Amen Corner. So we're mm -hmm. we're thankful for them. Just want to tell you too, uh, we do have the right to meet. We are uh, honoring the social distancing guidelines here. So you know, next week, if you want to come, we would encourage you to come, <laughs> be a part of the service. You know, Satan is not Satan doesn't win in this thing. That's right. right. So we've mm -hmm. got, uh, how many, I don't know, we've got 15 people here or so. So, uh, you know, come out, pray about it, come on out. Uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, but at very least, uh, let us know that you're watching. We uh, would love to hear uh, who you're watching with, where you're watching from. Yes. It would be a great encouragement to us. Uh, this is the vision statement that the, the Lord has given to us here at, uh, at Faith Life Fellowship. Uh, if you uh, are, are part of our church, you've heard this before, but if not, uh, maybe the first time, but this is what God has given to us. He said, we're all part of the vision. Everybody just say this with me. I'm part of the vision of walking in love, abounding in faith, and manifesting the blessing in all the nations of the earth. Isn't that exciting? Mm -hmm. And also, we know, uh, if you see it back uh, behind me here, uh, the prophet of God has declared for 2020 that it is a year of supernatural increase. Amen. It says God will open a new door mm -hmm. and you will experience supernatural increase as never before. So I like Amen. that, as never before. We've all experienced supernatural increase. Yes. But this is a new supernatural through a new door. Amen. How many are excited about that? Yes. I mean, Amen. Uh, man, it, it, it's, it's powerful. Also, Brother Copeland has declared by the Holy Spirit that it's a year of new visions. So obviously, with what we're going through, uh, we've got we're going to have to get some new visions here, yeah, bigger yeah. visions, more powerful visions, uh, a year of manifest power and a year of great change. Amen. And boy, is that easy to see? You know, we're t we're talking about getting back to normal. Well, I guess there isn't really such a thing now, uh, back to normal. We're going to get back to mm -hmm. to meeting together. It is not normal for a Christian to not socialize. You have to understand that, right? <laughs> we were made. Uh, to, to get together as a body. Amen. And I told the body this morning, I feel like a potluck's coming on. You so. know, potluck. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's just continue Amen. to believe uh, a couple of states have opened up uh, this weekend, and let's just yes. believe for our state yes. that, uh, that this state is beginning to open up. You know, this... Uh, uh, the regulations, the restrictions, I understand somewhat why they've been put on, but it's causing great distress in a lot of people. And it's a plan of the enemy to destroy us. And we're just not going to stand for it. 
right? We're not going to stand for it. So let's just believe together. Uh, Jojo, why don't you open us in prayer? Let's just join your faith together with us. Let's believe for, uh, for utterance. Let's believe for the anointing of God. See, there's no, uh, no distance or time and space for the anointing of God. So wherever you're sitting, the same anointing that's right here in us and on us mm -hmm. uh, can be in and on you. Amen. Yes, amen. Pastor amen. Jojo. Dear precious Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, Lord, we just pray for the leaders of our state, Lord, and we just thank you that right now mm -hmm. they're so sensitive yes, to the Lord. things of God. They're getting more sensitive. They're getting convicted, Lord. What has been done wrong shall become right in the name of Jesus. There is no Satan agenda in our state. We call it healed well, and we call people in, we call people getting saved, we call people getting healed, mm -hmm. we call people prospering, we call the blessing on the state of Colorado spiritually right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, thank we just thank you for this you. service today. We thank, thank you for Lord. people that have come expecting, mm -hmm. people that are listening expecting. Lord, mm -hmm. we thought we call people to be drawn in on Facebook, on YouTube right now in the name of Jesus. We have a word of hope, and we just thank you, Lord, as it comes forth today, that people have hope in their hearts for yes. their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So again, just, amen. you know, if you... Uh, watching us on Facebook, you can interact on the in the chat uh, column there. We'd love to love to hear from you. So let's get into the word that Amen. the Lord has given us uh, given to us today. We always uh, like to start out uh, by framing our world with our words. You know, the 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 power of life and death has been put mm -hmm. in in inside our mouth. So say this after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. The inspired and living word of God. The inspired and living word of God. Given to all men for all ages. Given to all men for all ages. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. Hallelujah. Uh, I lost my place here. I can do what it says I can do. As I'm taught the word of God. As I'm taught the word of God. I boldly declare. I boldly declare. I have eyes to see. I have eyes to see. I have ears to hear. Ears to hear. And my heart is open and receptive open to the and truth receptive. of God's word. <laughs> And I'll not only be a hearer, I'll not only be but a I'll, hearer. Be a I'll be a doer. I'll be a doer. I'll be a doer. I'll be a doer. I'll be a doer of the word of God. Of the word of God. As I do. As I do. I know I will be blessed. I know I will be blessed. Amen. 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 Now, uh, I guess about three weeks ago, we started a new series. It's a series that we did back, uh, I think, of three, four years ago, uh, called "From Devastation to Restoration." So today is part three. We had, of course, a little. Uh, sidetrack with uh, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, last Sunday. So let's get back into it today. If you missed those first two uh, messages, of course, you can go to our website and listen to them. Uh, today, the title of uh, my message is Something New. Mm -hmm. Something New. So let me ask you this. If you were with us a couple weeks ago, how many in the last two weeks have had uh, a different kind of week than you've had in a long time because, as we talked about, you got fed up. Amen. You got fed up with the enemy. <laughs> See, getting fed up with all the junk that the devil has brought into our lives is really the first step in going from devastation to restoration. Uh, Holy Spirit, I just heard this in my heart. I uh, just wanted to share this with you. Uh, most of you know this, but Dr. Savell, Dr. Jerry Savell and Carolyn are our mentors. Uh, we're licensed and ordained under their ministry as well. Uh, he wrote a book several years ago with the same same title. And so I'd really encourage you to go to their website, uh, order that book. It'll be a great great and inspiration for you. But a lot of what I'm pre going to preach here today and in the next few weeks is was based on that book and some additional things that the Lord has given to me. So uh, we're talking about devastation to restoration. We are in a time right now yes. where it's no doubt in my mind that the enemy is doing everything he can to steal, to kill, mm -hmm. and destroy. Amen? Mm -hmm. So really the focus of this series uh, is to encourage you, it is to equip you yes. to believe God, to restore anything and everything that the devil has stolen from you. Mm -hmm. Did you hear Did you yes. hear that statement? Yes. How many have had some things stolen from you? Yes. See, we could all raise our hand. I'd raise both hands and both feet if I could. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going, thank God he's not going. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> but I just want to encourage you this week. Uh, this is a powerful thing. Uh, sit down. If you're married, sit down with your spouse, 
make a list of everything that the enemy has stolen from your life, say just over the last four or five years, Mm -hmm. and then let's believe God that we're going to get it back. Amen. How many believe that's a good idea? See, this is God's plan. This is not man's plan. This is not my idea. This is not Pastor Jojo's idea. See, for anyone who will work God's plan, you can count on that plan to work. Amen? Mm -hmm. So how many are fed up with the devil stealing from you? I am. Hallelujah. Are you ready to get back what rightfully belongs to you? Yes. Hallelujah. I can see all your hands raised at home. That's, That's awesome. Well, turn with me this morning to the book of Isaiah, chapter 42. Isaiah is uh, one of my favorite books of the Bible. Uh, For whatever reason, even as a brand new believer, it's one of the the books of the Bible that I was really drawn to. Uh, My very first Bible was a living Bible, and it was uh, very easy to understand. And so I got into Isaiah, and there was a lot of things that I learned as a new believer. But in Isaiah 42... And in verse 9, and I'm going to read to you today out of the Amplified Classic. If that you don't know what that is, there are two versions of the Amplified Bible. Uh, the newer one is just called the Amplified Bible. The, new, the older one is called the Classic. And so I'm reading to you this morning out of the Classic. It says, Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Mm. Hallelujah. Behold, the former things have come to pass. What former things? Everything that God spoke uh, by the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Everything that he said, he says, they've come to pass. But he says, now I'm ready to declare something new. And before it comes, he says, I'm going to tell you about it. Yes. That's pretty exciting. Yes. The Passion Bible says it like this. It says, I am foretelling the future... I declare it to you before it sprouts up. Amen. Hallelujah. The Message Bible says it like this. Before it bursts on the scene, I'm telling you all about it. (laughs) So before whatever God has for you and I bursts on the scene, he's telling us about it today. Amen. God says he wants to do a new thing in your life. Can he do it? Mm -hmm. Amen. Is he capable? Can he? Mm-hmm. Is, 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 with God, are not all things possible? Mm-hmm. How fully? In fact, right here, he says, before they, cut, they spring forth, before they manifest, before they show up in your life, he says, I'm going to tell you about them. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a great promise for us. Well, as I thought about that, how does God speak to us concerning those type of things? Well, one way that he does is through the prophet's of the land. Mm-hmm. Now you don't have to turn there. I'll just share it with you. You can, if you're taking notes, just write this down. In the latter half of the scripture in Second Chronicles 2020, we're told this. It says, "Believe in the Lord your God." How many believe in the Lord your God? Amen. Hallelujah. So you shall be established. Believe His prophets, so shall you prosper. What a wonderful promise! I'm telling you, this is a wonderful thing, and I'm going to tell you why. Because if you don't know what God is doing, then there is a possibility that you might miss it entirely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to miss what God is doing? Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. So the question I'm going to ask you is, what do we know about the year 2020? Mm -hmm. Well, if you just, all you got to do is look at the banner behind us. If you're part of this church, the prophet of God is declared to us and to to me, to you, to anyone who will believe it, anyone who will receive it, the prophet of God, is the prophetic word for this year is that God is opening a new door in 2020 and that you'll experience a supernatural increase beyond anything that you have experienced before. That tells me that God wants to bless us beyond our natural talents and abilities. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, as we step into this new decade that we're in, don't be limited by your own strength, by your own ability, by your own education or skills or whatever. Believe God for something bigger. See, supernatural increase is our covenant right. And so now is the time for us to experience a greater manifestation of God's blessings. 
Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, we, we used this scripture two weeks ago, Hosea 4, 6. Again, just write it down. It says, my people are destroyed. Why? For lack of knowledge. knowledge. See, the knowledge of God and the knowledge of his word are vitally important to your life. You know, it is, is possible to have God moving right in the very midst and yet miss him entirely. Mm -hmm. you go, Pastor Chris, how could that be? Well, let me show you. Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 5. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you an example. Hold your place there in Isaiah, because we're going to come back there. But in Luke, chapter 5, hallelujah, Dr. Luke writes about an experience. Hallelujah, let me find it here. Luke 5, here we are. This is in verse 17. He says this. One of, the, one of those days, as he was teaching, talking about Jesus, one of those days as Jesus was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come from every village and town of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. In other words, they had come from all over. And the house was packed. And it says, And the power of the Lord was present with him to heal them. Hallelujah. The power of the Lord was present with him, talking about Jesus, mm -hmm. to heal him. The Passion says, I like the way the Passion says it, it says the power of the Lord God surged through him to instantly heal. So here we have a house filled with the doctors of the law, the religious people, the religious leaders of the day. And the Bible tells us that healing power was in the house. That's amazing. But if you continue to read through the chapter here, what you'll find is that not one of those people got healed. Mm -hmm. Not one single person got healed. Even though, as the Bible says, the power of the Lord God surged through him to instantly heal. Now, there is one man that did get healed. But the interesting part of that, he was an outsider. He wasn't a part of the doctors of the law and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders. He was from the outside. And this man was so sick, he couldn't even walk. So he, his friends had to bring him on a stretcher. Hallelujah. I was thinking about that this week, how fortunate that man was to have four men full of faith yes. where they would agree to put him on a stretcher. And who knows how far they had to walk Mm -hmm. to bring him to Jesus, believing for their friend to get healed. We all need friends like that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So when they got to the house, of course, if you know, read the story, the house was so full of people, so packed, that they couldn't get in. But here's the key, and don't miss this. They would not take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. Oh, the house is full. Sorry, you can't get in. Oh, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to go home. There's no room. No, they didn't. They said, no, we're not going to, we're not going to take that for an answer. You know, I think this is where many Christians tend to get defeated. And that is in the initial phase of their walk of faith. A roadblock pops, it pops up, presents itself. And because that roadblock looks so insurmountable, what do they do? They just give up. Yeah. Saints of God, you can't give up. Even if it looks impossible, even if you can absolutely see no way for it to happen in the natural, in your finite little, you know, little mind, with God, all things are possible. Amen? You know, Pastor Chris, when you were just talking about lack of knowledge in studying this week, I, I was reading Pastor Chris's notes yesterday, and I was just amazed <laughs> what I was studying and what he was studying, how it was just intertwining. I, I, I was studying in Ephesians 1.3, 1, one of the scriptures I was reading, and it talks about the blessing to be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing mm -hmm. in the heavenly realm. He was just talking about lack of knowledge and ignorance by these people couldn't receive. Well, this is the thing. When you get saved, these blessings are, are on the inside of us. So the question is, how do we get the blessing that are 
that's been deposited in us to come upon us. See, I think that's the key right here in restoration and what he's talking about is, I think we're, this is where Christians get this block. How do you get the blessings to come upon us? They're inside us. Well, it's funny because he's talking about Luke 5, 17, and I was in Luke 4, 17. And it's the same thing. Jesus was in the temple, just like Pastor Chris was saying. He, he was in the temple and nobody got healed. But in, in verse 417, it talks about Jesus being in the temple. And he was already in the word as a child meditating. There's a key here to this. What he's talking about is the word. Jesus as a child was meditating on the word already. So the anointing was so heavy on him when he was in the temple that day that the leaders were astonished. Just like Pastor Chris said in the next chapter, they were astonished because the teachers of the law had never heard such a thing. You know why? He had spent time in the Word. Yeah. And that's where the blessing is for restoration. It's on the inside of us. And by meditating, that's how you get the blessing to come upon you, and it starts manifesting in your life daily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these guys were fed up. Yeah. They were, they were fed, fed up. up with their friend being sick. So they found a way in. They would not take no for an answer. So what did they do? They climbed up on the, the roof of the house. They tore part of the roof off mm -hmm. and lowered the man down to Jesus. Now, it's kind of interesting. Jesus didn't look up. Hey, hey, stop stop destroying this property. Don't, don't hurt this guy's house. No, apparently it didn't bother Jesus in the least because it says Jesus saw their faith. Mm -hmm. Amen? Jesus saw their faith. What was the result? The man was healed of his disease. So here we have a room completely full of people, but not one got healed that day because they were not in the flow of God's power. Hallelujah. Mm. They weren't in. Remember what the word said. It said, the power of the Lord God surged through him to instantly heal, but yet not one except this outsider got healed. So what this shows us today is that God can be doing something, something great, Yet not everyone around will be affected by it. Could it be that we get so preoccupied with our problems that we're not able or we don't hear what God's answer mm -hmm. to us is? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. What did God say? He said, remember in the scripture, he wants to do something new. Amen. And he says, before it happens, I will tell you about it. Mm -hmm. That tells me we have to be expecting Mm -hmm. We have to be anticipating something new from God. How, how often? Every day. Mm -hmm. When you wake up tomorrow morning, expect something new from God. Mm -hmm. When you come to church on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night, expect something new from God. In other words, get something new minded. Does that make sense? Talk about something new. Believe for something new. I see that. When you do that, that's getting yourself something new-minded. Mm. And then when something new does happen, guess what? You're not caught off guard. You're right in the right place at the right time. Yeah. You've been expecting it, and you just thank God for it. Amen? Mm -hmm. You'll be right in the middle of it. Why? Because you've been expecting, expecting it. it. You've been decreeing it. You've been declaring it. You've been looking for it. You've been expecting it with your faith. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, Hebrews 1 declares to us what, what the power of having bold faith is. Uh, let me read that to you out of the Passion. Hebrews 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith brings our hopes into reality and brings the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Isn't that good? That's good. Your faith is all the evidence that you need. It's all the evidence that's required to prove what you can't see. Hallelujah. See, as Christians, we are to be calling those things which be not as though they are. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Hallelujah. But what is it, though, that prevents us from seeing this kind of thing in our lives? Well, it, if you held your place in Isaiah, this is just nine verses later. Isaiah 42, we started in verse 9. Skip down to verse 18. <clears throat> this time I'm reading out of the Passion. This is what he says in verse Isaiah 42, verse 18. He says, Hear me, you deaf. Look up, you blind, and see. Who is blind is my servant Israel, 
or as deaf as the messenger I send? This is God asking, asking these questions. Who is as blind as my covenant friend, as blind as Yahweh's servant? Israel, you have been so much, but you don't get it. You've been taught so much, but what did you really hear? See, he's saying the people in Isaiah's day were blind and deaf to the truth that God wanted them to see and hear. I want to read this to you out of the message translation, and I understand it's just a, a paraphrase, but this particular scripture has a way of hitting you right between the eyes. He says this, You've seen a lot, but you've looked at nothing. Pay attention. Are you deaf? Open your eyes. Are you blind? You're my servant, and you're not looking. You're my messenger, and you're not listening. Mm. The very people I depended on, servants of God, blind as a bat, willfully blind. See, willfully blind means they've chosen to be blind mm -hmm. and not see. He says, you've seen a lot, but you've looked at nothing. You've heard everything, but listened to nothing. Mm -hmm. God intended, out of the goodness of his heart, to be lavish in his revelation. But this is a people battered and cowed, shut up in attics and closets, victims licking their wounds, feeling ignored, abandoned. Hmm. But is anyone out there listening? Is anyone paying attention to what is coming? <laughs> wow. Wow. You could say it's almost written for the exact time that we're in right now with the social distancing and, and the sheltering at home rules in place. So many people, Christians see themselves as victims, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But he's saying, are you paying attention? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I want to do in your life? Mm. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. What is God saying through all this? It's really easy to summarize. God is saying here that the only thing that can prevent him from doing this new thing is if his spirits, uh, excuse me, is as is, is if his servants are being spiritually blind and spiritually deaf. Well, that goes back into deception. And when you're in the word, that nullifies deception because you're getting God's word in your spirit. You're meditating. So the revelation comes forth to tell you what to do. And a lot of this is because people don't take the time to be in the word. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, so many people in the world, they think that God is some mysterious being who will do things that no one can ever know or expect. You know, God's, God, who knows what God is going to do? God is <laughs> mysterious. Well, you ever heard that phrase? Well, we will. God says himself. He, he'll tell us what he's going to do before he does it. Yeah, yeah. But in order, just like Pastor Joe just said, in order to know that, you have to be grounded in the truth. Mm. And you have to know his word, and you have to know his will. Amen. Well, well look so, at honey. Look at um, Luke eighteen again, verse or chapter four, eighteen and nineteen. It goes right along with what he just read in Isaiah. He talks about he came to those who are downtrodden, crushed, broken down by calamity. Mm -hmm. Isn't that exactly what we've been going on in our country? Calamity. <laughs> but go to um, verse nineteen. I want you guys to see this because it's talking about. The blessing deposits, it's talking about the truth. And it says, but God said in verse 19, to proclaim the acceptable year, supernatural increase, Amen. of the Lord when salvation, listen to this, this is amplified, free favors of God profuse, profusely. Profusely abound. Free favors. Profusely He's trying to abound. give you guys free favors. But it requires getting his wisdom and meditating in the word to get the revelation of the blessings inside you so they come upon you. Does that make sense? I like that, yeah. Praise come up on me. So let's see what his word has to say this morning, and let's see what his word is. Now, uh, remember, uh, again, if you're taking notes, just write this down, Amos 3.7. The, the Old Testament is a type and shadow of what we truly now have in the New Testament with this better covenant and better promises. But in Amos 3, verse 7, in the Amplified Classic, again, he says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing. How much is that? How much is nothing? Nothing. <laughs> Where I come from, California, or I mean in Colorado, 
<laughs> nothing means nothing, right? Surely the Lord God will do nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. The Message Bible says, the fact is, God the Master does nothing without first telling his prophets the whole story. Amen. Hallelujah. Folks, this is such a powerful truth for our lives today. Amen. First of all, God has already told us he wants to do something new. Mm -hmm. But before he can do it, he has to have somebody who is listening and seeing with their spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. In other words, when God gets ready to do something new in the earth, what does he need? God needs a mouthpiece. Yes. He needs you. He needs me. Amen? See, in the Old Testament, the prophets were God's mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. God would reveal things to them. And their job as a prophet was to then reveal that to the people so the people then could begin to speak it out with their mouths. Mm -hmm. Amen? Remember, we live in God's voice-activated universe. Mm -hmm. And the way that we bring heaven down to earth, the way that we reclaim Eden on this earth, on this earth the way that we manifest, as Pastor Jojo was just talking about, as we manifest the blessing in the earth is with what we say. Amen. So in the, the, in the Old Testament, the prophet was the seer and the hearer. He would see and hear what God wanted to do, and then God would use him as a mouthpiece to declare it to the people. Mm -hmm. And once the prophet then would declare it, then God, this is so, this is so powerful, God, once it was declared, God then had the legal right yes. to confirm it with signs following in the earth. Yes. Hallelujah. Folks, the process is the same today. Yes. It has not changed. Mm -hmm. What has changed is that every born-again Christian is now the temple of the Holy Ghost. Mm. So that means every one of us can see and hear what God wants to do. Yeah. Amen? That's right. And so, again, that's why becoming a doer of the Word is so vitally critical to your life. I mean, you can read the Word of God, you can discover all the thing that God wants you to have for a certain thing, but it will never come to pass until you start to decree it and declare it by faith. Well, in Joshua 1.8, um, Pastor Chris, it says, again, meditate on the Word day and night, get it down inside you, that we will all observe to do all that is written, and then you will make your way prosperous and good success. Amen. It's right back into what he's just saying, this become a doer of the word. You get it so down inside you, it just flows up out of you in your conversations. Yeah. And whatever comes your pathway, it's in your, the word is in us. Yeah. You know, the problem in our churches today is that a lot of people know all about God, mm -hmm. but much fewer really know God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because there are many marvelous promises in this Word of God, in this book here, that are intended for every single believer. But just because they're in this Word, just because they're intended for us, does not mean that they will automatically happen for you. God has to have, watch this, God has to have legal access in the earth to manifest the things that he wants to do. You could say it like this. God needs, and I love this word, God needs jurisdiction in the earth before he can do something. If you look up that word jurisdiction, of course, it's a compound word. It's made up of two other words. The first word jurish means jurist, J-U-R-I-S, means law. And the second word diction means to pronounce. Mm -hmm. So until you speak the lawful word into your situation or circumstance, God is, now watch this, some people will have a problem with this statement. God is unable to do anything for you. His hands are tied. Mm -hmm. This is why what comes out of your mouth is so vitally important to your success or your favor, or, or your failure, excuse me. It's all about free will, isn't it? Yeah, you hear people say, well, God is in control. Yeah. God is in control. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? Folks, God is not in control in this earth. And people, will, before you turn off your, you know, your internet, let me explain what I'm saying here. God is not in control of the earth. Yes, overall, his, his plan of redemption will go forth, and he'll find somebody to, to work it through. But 
until someone prays, someone yields themselves to the to his will and to his plans and begins to decree and declare it and believe it. God cannot do anything in the earth. He gave out the earth to man. He gave us complete dominion and complete authority. So for him to come in and just do something without asking us or allow, allowing us to him for us allowing him entrance, he would go against his very word. Mm -hmm. And he can't do that. Amen. That's why you have to decree and declare the things that you're believing God for. You know, I, I've used this example many times. It still gives me uh, gives me a chuckle here and there. And you know, this is my my message, so I guess I can share it again. <laughs> we have a lot of case sera sera Christians in the church. Do you know what that means? Remember the song? Uh, is it back from the '70s? It might even be the '60s. I don't even know. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. Well, that's really that's really convenient. Yeah, you know, God's in control. Whatever's going to happen, happen. That's being a a no fault Christian. In other words, whatever happens, not my fault. Mm -hmm. That is not true. What has happened in this country is our fault. Because we haven't prayed. Because we haven't believed God for his perfect will concerning the United States of America. But we're getting closer now. Yes. Hallelujah. We're getting closer. But God is not in control. All right? Mm -hmm. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for me to declare his word, to give him jurisdiction in the earth to move in your life and in my life. The way he gets legal access is through you and through me. Job 22, 28 says, You shall decree a thing, and it shall become established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your ways. Mm -hmm. See, to be established means that it will arise, and it will come on the scene. Mm -hmm. I like the way the Amplified says it. It says, You shall decide and decree a thing. See, you're the one who has to decide what you want in your life. And then once you decide, it will manifest because you've decreed it. You shall also decide and decree a thing. It shall be established for you, and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Mm. See, Pastor Joe talked about favor a little earlier in this message. If you remember back, if you've been in our church any length of time, when we did teachings on favor, one of the definitions of God's favor is the opportunity to increase. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. The blessing now, which was first, well, the blessing and favor, you really can't separate them. The blessing of God on your life is the ability to increase, mm -hmm. but his favor brings you the opportunity to do so. Yes, open It's doors. okay to have the ability, but if you don't have an opportunity, how are you going to increase? Mm -hmm. So the blessing gives you the ability to increase while yes. his favor gives you the yes. opportunity. See, so we always believe for God's blessing and favor on our lives. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says right very clearly, when you decide and decree a thing, it says it will arise, it will come on the scene for you, and it does so by giving you an opportunity for that particular thing to happen in your life. That's good. This is powerful, folks. This is the good. devil does not want you to hear what we're, we're sharing with you today. Yes. So once you begin to decree the promises of God, You've now got given God a legal right. You've given him jurisdiction to come into your life, come into your situation, come into your, your whatever it is in your life, and, and confirm it with signs following on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. It is a spiritual law of increase. Amen? So until you learn to decree the promises of God in your life, Satan is just going to continue to hold you in bondage. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But thank God he's revealed the truth of this thing to our hearts this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's continue in Isaiah. This is verse 42. Isaiah 42. Remember, we started in verse 9. He says, behold, I'm, I'm doing a new thing, and I'm going to declare it to you before I do it. But he says in 22, you are a people who are been, have been robbed and plundered. Mm. You are all, all of them have been snared in holes and hidden in houses of bondage. They become a prey with no one to deliver them, a spoil, with no one to say, watch this, restore them. Say that with me, restore, restore. them. Mm. See, the same thing can be said for us today, that unless you recognize God's will for your life, you're going to stay in bondage to the enemy. 
And let me, I want to draw your attention back to one word in this scripture. I want you to circle it, underline it, highlight it, whatever you have to do, write it on the margin. Restore. But the word is restore. Restore. Mm -hmm. restore. Restore is the very heart of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. He wants to restore in your life everything that the enemy has stolen. I mean, everything. Everything that was lost not just money, to the enemy. Marriages, children estranged from you. Absolutely. I mean, that's all what God wants is to restore that unity, that love. Mm -hmm. And this is even bigger than that, folks. God wants to restore everything that was lost to the enemy after the fall. Mm hmm. See, this is why the word of the Lord that came to us in 2017 was so powerful and so prophetic, and it still is prophetic for us today, and I'm going to share these with you. See, just because we move into a new calendar year, when you have a prophetic word for a certain year, when the calendar changes, that word doesn't just go away. Yeah, right. It's still in the earth. Right. It's That's still right. God's purpose. It's still God's power. It's still God's plan. Mm -hmm. So he said to us in this church, and anybody else who received it in 2017, he said that the faithful shall flourish and it shall be like the days of heaven on the earth. Mm -hmm. Another way you can say that is, friends, that is restoration. Yes, right. The way the days of heaven on the earth are restoration. Mm -hmm. And then in 2018, of course, that word continues to go forth. In 2018, he said that year would be days of glory. Yes. Days of flourishing. Mm -hmm. Days of abounding. Woo-hoo! Baby, right. I like that. Free favors. Hallelujah. Free favors. And then <laughs> the calendar changed over 2019. He said, okay, this year I'm adding to that yeah. marvels and wonders and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. Mm. Hallelujah. And then January 1st, 2020, the, when the calendar turned over, he said, and now I'm going to add to those other three. He said, I'm going to open a new door in 2020, and you will experience supernatural increase beyond anything you've experienced before. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. How many believe that? Well, that's, that's actually happening in our church right now. It is happening. Through this season that it is the happening. world has had, we're seeing supernatural increase happening in our families, pay raises. More work, more hours. I mean, it, I've seen so much favor on this body. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it's, it's. We know we haven't talked with all of you, but those that we've talked with, everybody is maintaining, if not, yes. not going up, expanding, increasing. And in mm -hmm. a time like this, to me, that is supernatural. Uh, so back to verse nine again, and he says, "Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare." Mm -hmm. Before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. Mm -hmm. Again, the message about before it bursts on the scene, he says, I'm telling you all about it. Hallelujah. He says, in other words, he says, there's something that I want to do. And before it comes to pass, God says, I am going to tell you all about it. Mm -hmm. But see, if you are going to be a recipient of these new things, you have to have hearing ears. And, of course, I'm talking about spiritually attuned ears, not natural ears. Mm -hmm. If you've ever read uh, Mark chapter 4, that's where Jesus said, he cried, it says, the Bible says he cried out. If you ever wondered why pastors get excited and they shout? That's right there. He says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Yes. See, if you don't utilize that spiritual hearing, and hear what God is saying to you, you'll wind up getting robbed and living below your privileges as a child of God. Yes, you'll go to heaven, but you won't experience everything that God intended for you to have when you were on the earth today. Amen? And see, once again, the Bible proves itself true. He said God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. But then if you, if you continue to read on after that, it says, but they have rejected knowledge. It's not that knowledge is not out there for us. It is in, in every avenue that you could possibly look at. There has never been a time on this earth where more of the word is going forth in just about every conceivable avenue that you can think of. Yes. If you want to get the word of God into your life, there is no reason that you cannot get it. I mean, there are just 
thousands of, of possibilities for the word. Amen? Mm. God is not holding back on his knowledge. It's because people refuse to hear it. Mm -hmm. There's an abundance of knowledge mm -hmm. for you and for me if only we will seek it out. Mm. We have to become diligent in this word. Amen? You know, I, I feel like when you're talking about um, how God wants to reveal to it and we see it, I remember back in January when we had several prophetic words come forth that talked about the way God was going to deliver us and take care of us, but at the same time, something traumatic was coming. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what it was. We didn't even think, but we were told, and that's what we're talking about, that you get knowledge from God and you listen to men that are in the Word that have the that listen to the Lord and they're the prophets of the land because they're warning us as a church, get prepared, be ready. And when it happened, you know, we were ready. Mm -hmm. we, we're walking in peace, you know, and the world doesn't have that. I mean, isn't this what we've been preparing for? Isn't this what we've been in church all these years, building uh -huh. our faith, believing God's promises, mm -hmm. if not for times like this? Mm -hmm. This is exactly what we've been prepared for. Hallelujah. Let me share something with you. This, I believe this is what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you today. He says, I want to do something new, but I have to have somebody listening so that I can tell him, so I can tell it to them, and they must then decree it. When they decree it, they will give me legal right to do it in their behalf. Hmm. I believe that's... The That's Holy the Spirit's thing. heart this morning for this church and this body. Let me just read that again to you. He says, I want to do something new, but I have to have somebody listening so that I can tell it to them, and they must then decree it. When they decree it, they give me legal right to do it in their behalf. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, give us listening ears. Give, yes. give us hearing ears. See, God is ready, he's willing, and he's able to do a new thing in the earth. What is the new thing? One word, restoration. Yes. Restoration. Say that with me. Restoration. restoration. God is ready right now yes. to restore everything the adversary has stolen from you, and he's ready to take this devastation and to turn it into restoration. Thank you, Jesus. But in order for him to do that in your life, mm -hmm. you must begin to declare restoration over your life, over your marriage, over your family, over your children, over your health, over your finances, over your spiritual mm -hmm. life, your emotional life, your mental life, whatever it is, oh, spirit, soul, and body. Begin to decree and declare and to expect mm -hmm restoration. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. How badly do you want to see things restored in your life? Mm. That's bad. See, we talked, that's why we talked about what we did two weeks ago. You have to get fed up first. Yes. You have to get fed up with lack. Mm -hmm. You have to get fed up with not having enough. You have to get fed up with not having God's best in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. God wants this for you. I want it for you. Pastor Jojo wants it for you, but we can't do it for you. You know, um, I want to use this as an example. I was thinking about this when reading Pastor's notes. As Christians, I think one of the ploys of the enemy is to keep us quiet. And just like, you know, in misery, and we talk about it quietly. Go to a football game. And I, I'm just speaking about the world and whether they're happy or they're angry about something that's happened, do they get vocal? You know, it, my my question is, how come you can be vocal at something like that, but you won't get vocal about your personal life and what keeps being hammered at you if it's being hammered, and you just quietly accept it, but you can get vocal about something like that? That's what I I want to challenge you. It's that same fed up. You have to get vocal about yeah. your life. Yeah. Right? 
That's right. And you only you can do mouse. that. You can't be a mouse if you're going to be a Christian. You need to be a lion. Yeah? There's too many mousy Christians out there. That's what God said, fight the good fight of faith. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to fight, you're, you're not going to win. Yes. You know, bless your heart, you know. <laughs> I, I have to tell you something. I was talking to one of our congregation this week, and uh, she was fed up. She was so fed up, she's on this three-by-three three patio. That's her patio. And she was pacing, and she was speaking the word, and she was coming against what the enemy was trying to steal from her. And the neighbors walked underneath her, and she just smiled at them. See, that's the kind of thing about getting fed up. You finally get sick and tired of what he's been trying to do. And if you let him do it, he'll do, keep doing it the rest of your life. So somewhere we put a boundary. We put a boundary, right? Yep. And only you can do it. Yes. You're the only one for your life, for your family, for your household. It, it, the, the responsibility rests on your shoulders. Amen. Mm-hmm. So if you're at home... Would you stand up with me here in the, ch- in the studio in our church? Why don't you stand up? Let's raise our voices in praise to God. And let's just begin to decree and declare the restoration of heaven in our lives, in our marriages, in our finances, in our yes. health, in our schools, in our government, in our businesses. Let's give voice this morning yes. to the will of God in the earth. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we thank you, Lord, for these, these precious promises that yes, you have Lord. given to us. And Lord, we raise our, va- our voices in praise. Yes. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We glorify you for your goodness and yes. all the things that you've done. And Lord, we declare restoration, restoration. over this country. Restoration Restoration over the lives of the people yes. from the north to the south to yes. the east to the west. Restoration, restoration. in the jobs. Restoration yes. in businesses. Restoration in finances. Yes. Restoration uh, in, in every area of our lives, Lord. Yes. We call down heaven in the yes, name of Jesus. Jesus. Satan, we rebuke you. We come against you. We come against every plan and purpose that you have. We, we acknowledge God as our Lord yes. and Savior. We submit ourselves to him and you have to flee now in the name name of, of Jesus. Jesus. And we release yeah. blessings. We release favor yes. over this country from the north, the south, the east and the west, over our president, over our vice president, over his family, Lord, over our Congress and our House of Representatives, Lord, over our, our judicial branch. We release the blessing and favor of God against this, 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 this plan and purpose of the enemy that cannot stand. You said, Lord, that yes. no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And yes, every Lord. word that rises up against us will be condemned. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we are the voice of this country that is standing up. And we are saying, say it with me, restore, restore, restore. 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 Hallelujah. Mm. Now just give God a shout of praise. Amen. Woo! Amen. Woo! You God know, is good. Amen. Pastor Chris, you know the bottom line is is Jesus is coming. He is. I mean, if you get in Revelations, <coughs> everything we're experiencing right now is Revelations. He's coming, and he's coming very soon. But he's coming for a strong church, not a weak church. So we don't have anything to lose. We just got to get stronger. Hallelujah. The church has got to get stronger. Well, go ahead and sit down if you can at home or here in the in the congregation here. Uh, we just want to give you an opportunity to uh, sow into the Word. So uh, we just want to give you a, a little a little teaching on that area. You know, because of the blessing in our life, we are empowered to increase and become greater in all we do. That is the blessing. The very first thing that came into the ears of man was be blessed. Be blessed and multiply. But of course, you have to understand that blessing is not automatic, As we, even as we talked about today. All the anointings that go with the blessing are conditional. Many of the scriptures that speak of increase start with, if you'll do this, if you'll do that, then God says, then I will do this. Mm-hmm. See, that is a covenant relationship that we have with the Lord. His promise is to increase. It's in God is faithful. In fact, God is always faithful. Amen? Amen. So if you are not seeing increase, like the Bible speaks about, what is it that you know? Well, the first thing you know, the problem does not lie with God. It lies with us. Amen? Isaiah 119, many of you know it. It says, if you're willing and obedient, 
Willing and what? Obedient. Obedient. He says you shall eat of the good of the land. Hallelujah. Well, you know, obedience equals faith, if you haven't figured that one out yet. You can't be a faith person without obedience to this word. Mm -hmm. And the very next line, verse 20, is evidence of that. But he says in verse 20, if you refuse and rebel... You shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And it's not the Lord that's devouring you, it's the enemy. Yes. Hallelujah. See, this is a great example of what we'd call a conditional promise from God. But we have to understand, first of all, God is for us and not against us, right? Amen. God wants us to increase, right? In fact, no, God needs us to increase. He needs us to prosper in this earth. Why? Because our prosperity is a witness to the world of yes. God's goodness to us. Amen. He says, the goodness of God. What does it do? It leads men to repentance. Mm -hmm. See, our prosperity is a witness to this world of his goodness. Mm -hmm. Our prosperity is a witness to the world that God loves people. God needs you to prosper. Say, he needs me to prosper. He needs me to God prosper. needs you to prosper in order to demonstrate to the world yes. who he really is, mm -hmm. to demonstrate his goodness, mm -hmm. to demonstrate his mercy, mm -hmm. to demonstrate his love and his kindness and yes. his grace. Yes. And so Isaiah 61, 9, it's a very powerful verse that emphasizes how prosperity is an evidence of this blessing. It says, And their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants among the peoples. All who see them in their prosperity will recognize and acknowledge that they are the people with from whom the Lord has blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it any wonder that the devil does not want you uh, to prosper? That he, he does everything that he can to prosper? persuade Christians that prosperity <laughs> is not the will of God. Amen. The devil doesn't want you to be a walking billboard advertising the goodness of God to the world. That's for sure. That's the best way I can say it. Yeah. How many would like to be a walking billboard of his, yes, goodness? Of his goodness? Hallelujah. Well, that's what we are. And the way we partake of those great and precious promises the way that we hook up, if you say, with the blessing, the way the blessing continues to work in our lives, it all begins with the tithe. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You cannot separate the blessing from the tithe. That's where the covenant promises are made manifest in the tithe. So we just want to give you an opportunity. We'll put it up on the screen. Hopefully we got this right here. Uh, but go ahead and put, uh, we have our push pay mobile giving system uh, that allows you to give by uh, your phone or your computer or your tablet. Uh, I believe it's uh, seven, you, you, uh, if you haven't got the app, you can, uh, you text uh, push pay. Uh, push pay to 77977 and, and put, put the word push pay and text that to 77977. It'll send you the app. You just have to install the app on your phone or your computer and then you just look for Faith Life Fellowship. You can uh, pay that way also. Uh, we'll give you our address or you can email them. No, you can't email it. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, but you can send it to the church address, whatever. But we just want to, we want to pray over you. We want to pray over your finances. We're thanking you mm -hmm. uh, that everyone in this church, mm -hmm. say everyone. Everyone. You all are a walking billboard of God's goodness Thank in the you. earth. Thank you. I just heard the Lord say that. He says, declare that. These people that yes. are in the studio, these people that are watching us by way of uh, the, the internet, you are a walking billboard yes. of Thank God's you, goodness in the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you mm -hmm. for every person who is sowing seed today. Lord, uh, even for those that may not, not have seed to sow today, I pray for them that you, according to your word, you said uh, that you provide seed to the sower. So if you don't have seed today, just ask God to give you some seed. Thank you, Jesus. Because he says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. This is yes. God's plan for your increase and my increase. Thank I'm so you, thankful, Jesus. kind of interrupting my own thought. But even as Pastor Jojo said, for us personally right now, and I'm not bragging on us, I'm not, because I'm not that smart. <laughs> Just ask my wife. No, I'm not that smart. But we are financially doing better than we ever have ever. Mm -hmm. 
right now. Is that the truth? It is. It's very humbling. But it's because, because for years yes. we've been tithing. We've yes. been sowing. Mm-hmm. We've been believing God for increase. And when lack comes, when that... that uh, uh, the, the, the enemy comes in to try and steal in the midst of a, of a famine, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it. God mm-hmm. makes sure that his covenant partners continue to increase. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nothing short of a miracle. The mm-hmm. timing and all the things that we've done leading up to before this uh, yes. pandemic started. Yes. We look back and just go, oh my goodness, we can see that our steps were ordered of the Lord. And I know we're mm-hmm. not the only one. Most of you are probably have the same testimony out there, how God is just continuing to bless you. And, you know, folks, I believe as, this, our, as our economy begins to kick back in, we are going to see an economy that's off the charts. Mm-hmm. Off the charts. But even if it does not, you have to understand, more millionaires are made in a depression and in a time of lack, in a time of a famine, in a time of economic downturn than any other time. Mm -hmm. So what am I saying? It doesn't matter if the economy is up or down. doesn't matter Mm -hmm. if the stock market is up or down. doesn't matter if you get laid off or whatever. Uh, If you'll believe God, God will make sure that you increase. Amen. Amen. God will make sure you increase. I really believe this is a time of a dividing line for the church. And it's a it's, what I mean by that is the strong church has got to rise, and God is the provider of that. And that's where the provision is coming in. It's not us. It's, it's that we've made a stand. Amen. And, I mean, um, we just refuse to, be, we refuse to move. We refuse to fear. Mm-hmm. And our people are coming up to that. They're doing that, and they're seeing the dividing line, the difference in their life. Then there are other, you know, we want everybody to be like this, but they got to get it. They got to get it because it's powerful what God wants to do for us. Amen. Amen. So. And basically, to be honest with you, I'm just fed up. Yeah. I'm fed up with this whole situation. Mm-hmm. It's completely, in my opinion, it's overblown, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but this the whole thing is overblown. Right. It shows you that a year ago, we had, I don't know, thousands more deaths from the flu, and not one person got in fear because the media did not tell you to get in fear. But here we have a, what they call a pandemic, and everybody's in fear because the media has told you to fear. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Remember what happened to Job? That which he greatly feared has came come upon, upon him. him. I have no fear of the coronavirus. I go out about my business. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not saying, I'm not criticizing. If you need to wear a mask, you, you wear a mask. But for me, I know that the blood of Jesus yes. is surrounding me. Yes. That I am safe. That no weapon formed against me will prosper. Amen. And we're just fed up. And so we're decreeing. We have the victory over this thing already. There are too many Christians that have been praying and, de- mm-hmm. and de- decreeing the death of this thing. Mm-hmm. So we have the victory. We're just waiting for it to begin to manifest. And it is beginning to manifest. Amen. 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 So let's believe as we close today for an open Colorado or an open uh, uh, state wherever you are. I, I saw Corey and Christina, uh, friends of ours, watching from Michigan. We're believing for, Mi- boy, we, Michigan needs the prayers. Yes, with hi, that, kids. With that governor. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we just thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the victory that mm-hmm. overcomes the world, even our faith, that we have victory over this thing in Jesus' name, that mm-hmm. we're not going down, that we're increasing. We're going to be better off than we ever were. And as we come out of this, Lord, we're just going to continue to soar. We're going to continue to go see new doors opening, and we're going to continue to experience supernatural increase thank you, like Jesus. never before. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I just want to take a moment and tell our church family, thank you for all the wonderful emails and calls this week, checking on Pastor Chris and I. That was so sweet, and it really blessed us. And I want to tell Lily and Isaac, thank you for our presence that you brought to church today. We love you. Yeah, we see Pastor Pastor Pam Bollinger. See you watching. Praise God. It's good to to have you join us here. I'm trying to see... uh, uh, anybody else? I see Tyler there. Tyler, hey, Jared, nice to see you guys. Corey, Christina, welcome. Praise yes. God. God is doing some great things. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to end like we always end. 
Uh, <laughs> we love you. Yes. God loves you. And let me hear it. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. See you next week. Amen. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.